No, I'm sorry, Bobby. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going down that rabbit hole, buddy. <laughs> Here's what you got to understand. Here's what you got to understand. Critical thinking ain't going to help us in the battle against misinformation. <laughs> Where'd I get that idea? Buddy, I am illuminated and enlightened. I'm reading the New York Times. They told me not to go down the rabbit hole. And you know what, Bobby? I believe them. If you know anything about nutrition and exercise, you know that if you want strong bones, ligaments, tendons, muscles, hair, teeth, skin, nails, whatever, you need the five types of collagen in your diet. You can grab that through Biotrust. This stuff is awesome, guys. Click on the link in the description. If you don't know anything about it, you can watch a couple of the videos and get up to speed, but do yourself a favor and grab some. Okay, check out this article right here from the New York Times. Remember, the New York Times is a top shelf authoritative source, according to the authorities. He says, this this uh, opinion writer, Charlie Warzel, don't go down the rabbit hole. Don't you do it. Subtitle, critical thinking as we're taught to do. <clears throat> Subtitle, critical thinking as we're taught to do it isn't helping in the fight against misinformation. Couple couple things right here. Critical thinking isn't helping. Don't go down the rabbit hole. Critical thinking isn't helping. Shelf your critical thinking. Put your critical thinking in suspended animation. Don't ask further questions. And then he says, it's not helping against the fight against misinformation. A lot of times we've seen that mainstream media calls things misinformation that might be information worth considering. It says for an academic, Michael Caulfield has an odd request. Stop overthinking what you see online. Mr. Caulfield, a digital literacy expert at Washington State University, Vancouver, knows all too well that at this very moment, more people are fighting for the opportunity to lie to you than at perhaps any other point in human history. This could be true. This could be true. But we're going to look at where Mr. Caulfield is directing our attention. What sources should we go to to find out what the true information is? How do we get away from the misinformation? When you tell us that critical thinking isn't helping in the battle against misinformation, where is he wanting to get our information from? We're going to learn that. Misinformation rides the greased algorithmic rails of powerful social media platforms and travels at velocities and in volumes that make it nearly impossible to stop. That alone makes information warfare an unfair fight for the average internet user. So he's talking to you, the average internet user, somebody who, Hey, you might be tempted to use critical thinking in this situation. You might be tempted to go a little bit deeper than what you've been presented, but I want you to stop. Don't do it. Don't go down that rabbit hole. But Mr. Caulfield argues that the deck is stacked even further against us, that the way we're taught from a young age to evaluate and think critically about information is fundamentally flawed and out of step with the chaos of the current internet. I would have to agree with that. It is fundamentally flawed. Why do you think that is? Because a lot of people, specifically in America, have been taught through a 15,000 hour indoctrination program called public schools. So I would tend to agree with this. He says, we're taught that in order to protect ourselves from bad information, we need to deeply engage with the stuff that washes up in front of us. He suggests that the dominant mode of media literacy, if kids get taught any at all, is that, quote, you'll get imperfect information and then use reasoning to fix that somehow. <laughs> Wouldn't want to use reasoning. Wouldn't want to use critical thinking. Wouldn't want to apply questions and observations to a situation. We just need to look at it and believe it if it comes from a top shelf authoritative source like the New York Times or Google or Wikipedia, like we're going to learn here in a second from his article. But in reality, that strategy 
can completely backfire. In other words, resist the lure of rabbit holes in part by reimagining media literacy for the internet hellscape we occupy. He's going to give an example here in a second. It's often counterproductive to engage directly with content from an unknown source. So if it's a known source, hey, you can let your guard down, man. If it's a source you know, mainstream media, MSLSD, CNN, ABC, CBS, they they wouldn't direct you toward Fox News, but all the leftist media, hey, if it's a known source, you're good to go, man. You don't have to ask questions. Just... Let the barriers down and just walk right through because they have true information and anything that doesn't come from them has to be misinformation, right? And people can be led astray by false information. Influenced by the research of Sam Weinberg, a professor at Stanford and Sarah McGrew, an assistant professor at the University of Maryland, Mr. Caulfield argued that the best way to learn about a source of information is to leave it and look elsewhere, a concept called lateral reading. Let's look at an example of lateral reading. For instance, imagine you were to visit Stormfront, a white supremacist message board, to try to understand racist claims in order to debunk them. Even if you see through the horrible rhetoric, at the end of the day, you gave that place however many minutes of your time. Isn't this true of anything? How many minutes of your time do you give to Lester Holt in the nightly news or CNN or reading the Washington Times or the LA Times or the the New York Post? Don't you have to give your time to everything that you're considering in, in your consideration, whether it's true information or misinformation? Even with good intentions, you run the risk of misunderstanding something. Oh my goodness, because Stormfront users are way better at propaganda than you. They may be. Guess who else is really, really good at propaganda? Those people who tried to sell us on the lie of weapons of mass destruction. Just as one example. You won't get less racist reading Stormfront critically, but you might be overloaded by information and overwhelmed. Don't get, oh, don't go down that. We don't want you to get overwhelmed. We don't want you to start asking questions. We don't want you to go to other sources of information. You might get confused. You might get overloaded and overwhelmed and lose your way down in that rabbit hole. Our current information crisis, Mr. Caulfield argues, is an attention crisis. The goal of disinformation is to capture attention, and critical thinking is deep attention. People learn to think critically by focusing on something and contemplating it deeply to follow the information's logic and the inconsistencies. The natural human mindset is a liability in an attention economy. Let that sink in. The natural human mindset is a liability in an attention economy. It allows grifters, conspiracy theorists, trolls, and savvy attention hijackers to take advantage of us and steal our focus. Guess what? That is true. That is true. Grifters and conspiracy theorists and trolls and savvy attention hijackers will take advantage of us and steal our focus. That is true. And they come in all shapes and sizes. And they come in all different kinds of programming. They don't call it television programming for nothing. You, I agree with one thing on this. You have to guard your eye gates and your ear gates. And you have to guard your heart from all the stuff out there that's trying to occupy the space in between your ears. I totally agree with that. You have to be guarded. One of the best ways to guard, though, is to ask questions. One of the best questions to ask is, key bono, who benefits? One of the best assertions in any investigation is, follow the money. Usually when you come up with the answers to these questions, you find out who's guilty and who you shouldn't be listening to. Whenever you give your attention to a bad actor, you allow them to steal your attention from better treatments of an issue and give them the opportunity to warp your perspective. I agree with that too. I agree with that. That's absolutely right. But where does he want us to direct our attention? What is the remedy here? Well, we, we know from the title what one of the remedies is, hey, stop your critical thinking. Don't go down the rabbit hole. One way to combat this dynamic is to change how we teach media literacy. Internet users need to learn that our attention is a scarce commodity that is to be spent wisely. In 2016, Mr. Caulfield met Mr. Weinberg, who suggested modeling the process after the way professional fact checkers assess 
the information. Professional fact checkers like like Snopes.com, like Wikipedia, like Google, Mr. Caulfield, or like Facebook, Twitter. Mr. Caulfield refined the practice into four simple principles. Stop, investigate the source, find better coverage, trace claims, quotes, and media to the original context, otherwise known as SIFT. Mr. Caulfield walked me through the process of using an Instagram post from Robert F. Kennedy Jr., a prominent anti-vaccine activist. Do you know that if you listen to Robert Kennedy Jr., he will tell you plainly that he is not an anti-vaxxer? So this, this claim right here that he is this, is a false claim because he doesn't even make that claim about himself. Falsely alleging a link between the human papillomavirus VAXX and cancer. He says, if this is not a claim where I have a depth of understanding, then I wanna stop for a second and before going further, just investigate the source. He copied Mr. Kennedy's name in the Instagram post and popped it into Google. We're going to go to Google. So Mr. Caulfield says, hey, do you want to vet this source right here? Let's go to Google. Google will help us determine whether what Mr. Kennedy says is true or false, whether it's real information that we should consider or misinformation that we should reject. Look how fast this is, he told me as he counted the seconds out loud. In 15 seconds, he navigated to Wikipedia. Another source that you should use to vet all information that you're considering. This is how the professional fact checkers do it. And scroll through the introductory section of the page, highlighting with his cursor the last sentence, which reads that Mr. Kennedy is an anti VAXX activist and, oh no, conspiracy theorist. Which makes you think from your Google search through Wikipedia, the lenses by which you're now viewing life because this is what Mr. Caulfield says you should do. It goes back to the title of this opinion piece, suspend your critical thinking. Your critical thinking doesn't help here. Just let Google and Wikipedia do your thinking. Is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. the best unbiased source on information about a VAXX? I'd argue no. And why would he argue that? Because he consulted Google. He consulted Google. Wikipedia, he did what the professional fact checkers do. And that's good enough to know we should probably just move on. That's not critical thinking. That's letting Google and Wikipedia paint you into a biased corner. He probed deeper into the method to find better coverage by copying the main claim of Mr. Kennedy's post and pasting that into a Google search. The first two results, which you know you can trust, when you plug something into a Google search, you know that what comes to the top, what Alphabet Inc. gives you from Silicon Valley is the information that you should absorb and accept. All others should be rejected. The first two results came from these institutes right here. His quick searches showed a pattern. Mr. Kennedy's claims were outside the consensus. You know you shouldn't listen to anything outside the consensus. A sign they were motivated by something other than science. If it's within the consensus, it's science. If it's outside the consensus, it's not science. Within the consensus, accept. Outside the consensus, reject. Suspend your critical thinking in regard to this. Matter of fact, keep your, uh, your critical thinking suspended and just accept what Google gives you. That's what this article is saying. And we don't even need to go any further than that. You don't really need to go any further than the title. I mean, I suggest reading the rest of the article. There's some things that he says that are true, but the things that he says are true about misinformation applies equally to the CNNs of the world and the MSLSDs of the world and the ABC and the New York Times of the world, the top shelf authoritative sources. So New York Times tells you, do not go down the rabbit hole. Critical thinking isn't helping Basically, stop critical thinking. Think the way that Google and Wikipedia and the top shelf authoritative sources tell you to think. That's how you should paint your worldview. 
Let me know what you guys think about this article in the comment section below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody you know. Don't forget to subscribe to my private email list through my website, highimpactflix.com, and my members-only upload site, highimpacttv.com. And don't forget to follow me on my Odyssey channel where you will be rewarded for watching and engaging with my content. Your invitation link where you're going to get three LBC tokens, that's cryptocurrency, are in the description and in the pinned comment. I'll see you guys in the next heavily censored, shadow banned, 100% demonetized video. Guys, don't forget to take a second right now and click that invitation link in the description and in the pinned comment and follow me on my Odyssey channel. Check this out. This is my Odyssey channel right here. And when you click on my invitation link, you're going to be rewarded three library tokens three LBC tokens worth 19 cents each. And let me just show you this. On December 11th, this token was only worth 0 0.009 cents. Now it's worth 19 and a half cents. It's like a, a thousand or 1300% increase just since December 11th. So you're going to be awarded and rewarded three LBC tokens just for subscribing to my channel and verifying your account. And when you watch videos, any video you watch, any channel you watch on Odyssey, you're going to be rewarded also with more LBC tokens. LBC is a real cryptocurrency with real value. I will see you guys on Odyssey. While we have time and it still retains some of its perceived value, maybe it'd be a good idea to convert your worthless fiat into valuable, storable food. Don't be the one who waits till the food riots start happening. You don't want to be fighting panicking people in the store over that last jar of peanut butter. At Prepare with High Impact Flicks, you can get up to three air and watertight gasket sealed ammo cans, each filled with a four week emergency supply. Seven food varieties, 2,000 calories a day, 284 servings, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and each meal comes in a resealable, heavy duty, four layered pouch. And it's got a 25 year shelf life. Every order of a four-week supply gets you $100 off plus free shipping. Here's how simple it is to make. I'm going to cook up some Granny's home-style potato soup. People are going to think I'm a culinary hero. You open the pouch, boil four and a half cups of water, stir the contents, simmer on low heat for 15 to 20 minutes, take it off the heat, then let it set for two to three minutes before you serve it up. Man, this stuff's so good. People are going to think Granny stopped by and filled your kitchen with a whole bunch of love. Well, if Granny does stop by, she's going to fill your behind with a whole bunch of buckshot if you keep talking with your mouth full. Wipe your dang beard off. It's embarrassing. So maybe convert some of your worthless fiat into valuable food while you still can. Order now and get 100 bucks off of up to three four-week emergency food supplies at preparewithhighimpactflicks.com. The link is in the description.